Push That Rock here with Simpson Math, discussing limits and infinity. Here's the definition due to Bauer Strauss. So Bauer Strauss definition says the limit of the function f as x goes to infinity equals the number l if and only if for every this is the epsilon symbol in the Greek alphabet. For every epsilon that's greater than zero, there exists n such that when x is greater than n, it is guaranteed that the absolute value difference of the function and the limit is less than epsilon. Excuse me. What in the dickens? What in the dickens did all that just say? Okay, well, let's recall some basic math. Recall first that when we want to find distance between quantities, we can subtract. So 3 minus 2, if this was a positive 2 here, 3 minus 2 is 1, so the distance from 2 to 3 is 1. Now, if I did 2 minus 3, I'd get a negative, so that's what the absolute value is for we get absolute value. So negative two minus three is a negative five, but we're talking about the distance from here to here, so we make it five. Same thing if I go three minus a negative two, I get five and absolute value of five is five. So when you see absolute value, it just means the distance between those quantities. That's all it's talking about, okay? Then we saw an x greater than n. Well, here's an x-axis in a Cartesian plane. So we have our Cartesian plane, our vector space, R2 vector space. But on the x-axis, there's some point n, and when x greater than n just means beyond that. You, it means we're far enough out on the x-axis for something to happen. <clears throat> because of the, in the definition we see this. We say x is greater than n guarantees something. Okay, so that's all that means. So let's look at the definition again. So the limit of f, as x goes to infinity equals l if and only if for every epsilon is greater than zero. So that means epsilon is some positive number. And traditionally, we use epsilon for small positive numbers, tiny numbers like 0.001. Okay, but anyway, for every positive number, there is another number n such that when x is greater than, so when we're far enough out on the x-axis, it's guaranteed that the distance between the function and the limit, L, the function and the number L, that distance between them is smaller than epsilon. Well, epsilon was that positive number. Epsilon is then a proximity measure. It's, we're saying that L and F, the distance between them is smaller than this. So if this is a small number, then we're saying these two are close together. That's what the definition is saying. Let's look at it graphically. So here I have some wild function doing its thing and it oscillates. But at first it oscillates very wildly, then the oscillation tampers down. Okay, so we're gonna say this function is the function f. And notice this function f is getting very close to L, okay? super close to L. It's sometimes a little above L and sometimes a little smaller than L, but it's getting close to L. Graphically, we can look at this and we can say, hey, the limit of this function as the x values go out towards infinity, as the x values go out this way, the function seems to be getting close to what? Well, it's getting close to that number L, okay? Now, the definition says that there's some point, no matter how small an epsilon, let's choose this epsilon, this distance here. That's just epsilon right there. And of course you could go above or below. So I've marked epsilon in both directions. So this epsilon is a proximity measure. It's a distance from L. Now we can make this as small as we want because it said for any epsilon. So we could picture this getting smaller and smaller and smaller, closing in on L. But for any epsilon, there must be a point on the x-axis that when x gets beyond this, the function is always 
closer to L than epsilon. And notice here I'll shade, I've got this, I don't know if you can see this dotted line that represents L plus epsilon, but notice, and then L below L minus epsilon. Notice the graph is always closer to L than epsilon units. Oh, so we have it. When X gets beyond N, it guarantees that the distance between F and L, we denote that this way, the distance between F and L is less than epsilon. Now this is true, this is true, L is truly the limit of F, if this is true for any epsilon chosen, but the, you know, it's kind of hard to draw really finely small, but what I'm implying here with that arrow is that the oscillations get so small that it's basically right on top of that dotted line. And, so, and it gets closer and closer and closer. The pattern continues and gets closer. So as I close in on epsilon, as I make epsilon smaller, I might have to go further out. My n might have to come out here. But there will be an n for every epsilon choice, no matter how small I make it, so that the distance between f and l is smaller than epsilon. That is the essence of the Bauer-Strauss definition of a limit. Math made simple. It's Simpson math.